Hello guys, I have decided to redo my how to record your voice and the game sounds with your screen recording software tutorial. I'm not actually going to title it all that, but you get my gist. Okay, so <clears throat> let me just kind of give you a really quick explanation of things somewhat unrelated because you guys are going to be curious. This right here I have that checks both my GPU and my CPU core, which for some reason has been hot for a while, but Regardless. This is Skype. If you find me on Skype, I will block you. That's just how I am. Uh, this is my webcam. This is my internet security. These are updates waiting. And this right here is VMware. It is what I use to run Windows XP 32-bit from Windows Vista 64-bit, my current operating system. Now, let's get started. As you can see, there is no icon right where my cursor is. And there needs to be. So what I recommend you do is you right click right there and you click on properties and it will show you notification area. It might show you taskbar if you missed, but we want to go over to notification area and check mark volume. So we see the volume apply. Voila. Now we've got volume. Okay. So basically, let me just say that you need to do two things to get your sound to come through on your recording from both the game and your voice. You need to hear your voice through your speakers, and then record your speakers. Let's, let me say that again. Let, let it soak in. You need to have your voice come through your speakers, and you need to record your speakers. Now, if you think about it, that would obviously solve the problem. It's not particularly straightforward on how to do that, though. So let's go in here. Let's go into recording devices. Now, if you could see all this, you'd be halfway there. But you probably don't. You probably just see microphone, microphone, something like that, and nothing from here on down. You'd see something more like this, except this would say microphone. I can't disable this right now, because if I did, you wouldn't hear me anymore. Anyhow, so we need to be able to see the rest of the stuff. At this point, what you need to do is you need to right click on this screen right here and you need to click on show disabled devices and show disconnected devices. You'll see a whole bunch of stuff come in, a few more things come in, hopefully. If you see stereo mix there, you're doing good. If you don't see stereo mix, you're going to have to go with a hardware solution because probably your motherboard can't handle doing it on its own. But the hardware solution is relatively cheap. Um, anywho, but if you do see stereo mix, you want to enable it. You also want to make sure that your microphone is enabled. It's kind of weird, I know, but you need to have both of them enabled temporarily because this is only the first half. This is making it so that you can record your speakers. If you started trying to record right now, it would hear the game just fine, but it wouldn't hear your voice. The next thing you need to do is you need to get this software right here. It is Realtek HD Audio Manager, and it is free, but it's really, really hard to find. I'm going to try to find it and put a link to it in the description of this video. Hopefully I'll find it. If I can't, sorry. <laughs> Anywho, so it's really cool software. You go and you'll right click on it and you click on Sound Manager, and you'll bring this down. Now, if you didn't have this enabled, this tab would not be here. So you need to make sure that this tab is here because you'll come here and you'll see the playback volume here. And this will have a red line through it and it will be muted. That is what we need to change. We need to click on that and make it so that there is no red line through it, just like you see it here, and it's not muted. What that does is it means that your voice going through your microphone will now start coming out either your speaker or your headset, whatever it is you have. So there you go. You end up getting both of the necessary things to do that. Now, this isn't, of course, an explanation in Vista. I don't know what it is in XP that you need to do to do this. You can probably still use the Realtek HD Audio Manager. It's probably got that functionality. But I don't know how you can see stereo mix or how you can enable recording stereo mix in XP. I just don't have that operating system. I do with this, but I don't really want to deal with that. And it's pretty obvious reasons why. It's just a lot of complicated stuff that I'd have to install, and hopefully this tutorial will be enough to guide you in the, on, the, on your way. 
no. Let's go to the issue where either you have some weird operating system, your motherboard can't handle it, or whatever. You just can't get to the point where you see the stereo mix or some other thing in this tutorial isn't making sense. We go with the hardware solution. You shouldn't have to pay more than $15 for all the parts. And they're pretty easy parts. So let's start out, well this is the wrong picture, but let's start out with this. This is something you need to buy. You need to buy a basic audio cable. This should be cheap. You could probably be as short as like six inches and that would be enough. Make sure it's got the two prongs. That's what we need. And you need to buy two audio splitters. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you the back of a motherboard. And this is what we need to look at. This right here is your microphone, generally. It can be customizable. And this is generally your headset, speakers. If you've got 5.1 surround sound, you probably have this plugged in here, here, and here. Or something like that. <coughs> but these two are the ones that we're dealing with. What we need to do is unplug both the number one um, plug-in for your speakers or headset as well as your microphone. So you'll unplug both of these wires and then you'll plug in both of your splitters. These guys. They're kind of crammed in there but hopefully you'll be able to fit that in there. You might be able to do it diagonally or whatnot. So you plug them both in. Now you've got four holes where you used to have two. Kinky, I know, but very convenient. What you're going to do is now plug in the original wires that went into both of these holes into one of the two holes that were there. Now you're going to take your audio cable and you're going to plug the remaining two holes between these two splitters together. What that will do is will make your sound that comes out of your audio port it will come down the wire and plug right into your microphone so your microphone thinks that it's got two things coming in both from your voice and from what is sent out to your speaker. It might not be the highest quality of sound, but it should work just fine and there's really no way that your microphone will know the difference or your motherboard will know the difference. So this is a way that you would be able to record it. In that case, back in the recording devices, you would only have your microphone enabled. You would not have stereo mix enabled. You wouldn't make it so that you could hear your sound through your, uh, the voice through your speakers, etc, etc. So hopefully this gives you kind of an idea on how to do it and hopefully I won't be asked this question over and over and over again a million times over. Hopefully this answers just about everyone's question. So as a synopsis, if you have trouble with this tutorial or the stereo mix doesn't show up, which is one of the more common problems, you're going to probably have to go with a hardware solution. I've never tried it, but it should work just fine. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope it helps. I'll talk to you guys another time. Actually, let me add in a final warning. If you have on your recording devices your microphone enabled and a check mark right here, something, this basically means this is your default device. And most recording software is stupid. Let me open up Fraps for a second. We're going to Movies and bam, there you go. We have both our stereo mix and our microphone working. Oh, also, it, you have most things have the option of detect best sound input or use Windows input. Detect best sound input will try its darndest to pick the option you don't want. So don't go with that. <laughs> use Windows input. It's better than any, better than whatever. So what you have to do is you have to make it so it doesn't say microphone otherwise you'll have the same problem you had before. So in that process you need to now disable your microphone. You can also set this as a default device but it's just better just to disable it. So you should still be able to hear me just fine because my sound is coming through my stereo mix. I'm recording that. So now it's still selected on microphone. You'll not even record anything now that you got it disabled. So you actually have to shut down the software. Yes, shut it down. Open it back up. And bam, there you go. Stereo Mix is selected. That's what you need to do. And if you ever forget or you mess with these settings and you start recording again, it's probably going to be on the wrong thing. And you're probably going to have a lot of wasted footage because there's no sound or none of the sound that you want to show up. So that's a major warning. I would recommend every single time you're wanting to do a decent amount of footage, do a sound check whether you think it's working or not. 
I know it's inconvenient, but I really strongly recommend it. You have no idea how much footage I've lost because I kept not ending up recording the sound. So good luck and have fun.